So we also want to find a similar expression. Um, in the previous video, we ended off with this guy, which is uh, the torque is equal to I alpha, which we call the rotational equation of motion. And this was for a particle. Okay. But what about extended objects like this, an extended object? Okay, so let's consider, as we did before, let's consider breaking up this object into these very, very small particles or small segments, okay, of inertia delta M, N, where N is the number of particles that we consider, or N is just the, the particle, okay? All right, and we know that it is located, we choose a point of rotation, we choose the uh, direction of rotation uh, that is positive. And then we also have the radius for each of these particles on the object. Okay, and it says let each particle be subject to a torque about this axis. And this torque is caused by forces exerted by surrounding particles and external forces. So a single particle here or a segment is engaging with particles right around it and those are interaction pairs so they are this little particle is experiencing a, a torque from the particles around it as well as um, torques caused by external forces so for each particle for each of these particles we can write the expression for torque Meaning, uh, and this is this is how we write it: the torque of particle n, okay, is equal to um, is equal to. Remember, we looked at in for a part for a particle in the previous section, it was m r squared alpha, but now the the inertia for this little particle is delta m for particle n, and that r n is squared, and then we also have alpha n okay now if we add up all these torques of every single particle that we consider on this extended object we get this the sum of the torque okay the sum of the torques is equal to the sum of this right and remember if we br if we isolate this first section this then becomes our uh, rotational inertia for the entire object. So the sum of the torques is equal to the rotational inertia times alpha. Okay? But now what we need to see is that this includes both internal and external for, uh, forces, torques caused by these uh, internal and external forces. Okay? But we know that all internal forces will cancel out with each other, which means that their torques will also cancel out with each other. So all internal torques drop out of the sum on the left-hand side. All internal torques drop out. So we are left then with this guy, which says the expression we obtained for an extended object is therefore identical to that for a particle, which is this. The sum of the torques due to external forces is equal to I alpha. Okay. All right. We'll stop there for, for now.